We are here to talk about two new lenses. This is a Cinedy Gear News video. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinedy, and I'm here with Wakamatsu-san from Sigma. Wakamatsu-san, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you very much. And it's nice to see you again, nice to talk to you again. And let me just introduce you to our audience. You are a product planner at Sigma Corporation. Mm -hmm. This is a job title, but in reality, what does it mean? What is your everyday job? Yes, I'm a kind of product manager uh, of Sigma products, especially for uh, cameras like FP series, also our Sigma Primes and Zooms. Yes, and a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. There's enough to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we are here to talk about two new lenses that were just announced. Mm -hmm. And those are part of your CineArt line. The first one is a 65 millimeter T1.5 lens. Can you tell me a little bit about this lens? Because obviously you have a, a line of lenses, but this one, although it's part of the family, it's a bit different. Why? Yes, uh, we just announced this new 65 T1.5 full frame as a one of our new face in our existing cinema uh, primes to expand our cine lens lineup. Especially for we uh, concentrate on the gap from 50 to 85. So also we have received a lot of requests from uh, our customers. So that's why we uh, decided to dis develop this new 65. So although it's part of the same family, the lens itself is very different because you really took it, it's not anymore like a rehoused photo lens in the body of a cine lens. That was actually designed from the ground up to be a cine lens. What does it mean? Yeah, our existing premise is a kind of rehoused lenses that was based on our uh, DSLR lenses. S but this new 65 has such a dedicated cinema design for uh, movie shooting. So the concept of the lens design is to keep its consistency between our existing primes, like resolution, uh, chromatic aberration, also distortion, like at a, uh, yeah, in short reward, look, and also it, it's housing, like the location of rings and the diameter of front ring also. However, uh, we also would like to try to, to improve its image quality as a kind of ideal cinema spherical glass. So we, uh, during its design, we de design its, its focus breathing, the amount of focus breathing to minimize to it. That sounds all good. And by the way, which mount this lens will have? It's the same as our existing primes, like EF, PR, also E mount. Wakamatsu-san, when you talk about optical design or enhanced image quality, can you please elaborate a little bit? Yes, our, its optical design is completely different uh, our existing primes because uh, there are no base lens of, in our DSLR lineup, like 65 millimeter f1.4 DJHS. So uh, it's completely different from our mirrorless one, 65 f2, because the image quality it's based on, uh, originally from its optical design, mm -hmm. just all of it. So it doesn't need such uh, latest uh, in-camera aberration correction, like uh, distortion correction, chromatic aberration correction, other uh, binetting or so. So uh, you, can, you can use this, this lens for every camera. You so actually, in another words, what you're saying, try to switch off all the electronic and let the lens speak and shine with, with its optical quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 
speak, speaks uh, straight from its optical design. And the, the next lens that I would like to talk about, the T-stop is a bit slower, although the aperture is quite fast. Please introduce the 65 mm classic lens. The new classic prime is a 65 mm T2.5 blue frame. So it means slower than our normal one, T1.5. So it means the amount of bokeh is completely same and its resolution is also same because the basic optical design is the same. However, its coating is different. So T-stop is calculated from its F number, also its transparent ratio of glass. So that's why T, the, its, its coating is base, basically it's an uncoated one, also different coated. So its transparent ratio is low. So the, the bokeh is the same, but slower. I'll try to make it a bit easier maybe for some of the people who are not aware of the differences between f-stop and t-stop. With this lens, you can still open the aperture to 1.4, mm -hmm. but the amount of light that actually is reaching the camera itself is a bit less, and that's why it's rated uh, T2.5. Mm -hmm. I think this is how I like, like to summarize this. And as you said, you keep a lot of the caricaturistics of the bokeh itself, but there's a bit of less light entering the lens, the, the camera through the lens because of the coating. Why you made a decision to go with two versions of 65 millimeter? Yes, it depends on the customer's request. So especially for commercial shooting, so they would like to use our lenses that describes such products and cosmetics models as it is. So that's why they would like to use very high resolution and low vignetting, low distortion one. So uh, our art primes was very, a lot of used for such commercial shooting. And how the focus breathing will be with this lens? Also well controlled, like on the normal new 65 millimeter? It's same as new 65 T1.5, because the optical design is the same. Welcome to san we're talking about lenses, and of course we're talking about your Cine Art Prime lenses. But there's one more lens that I remember, it's, it's a completely different one. It's for mirrorless, it's for Fujifilm. This is a lens that you already announced in the past. Yeah, this is the 18 to, to 50 millimeter. Can you please be kind and update us about the status of this lens? Actually, its prototype is here. Uh, we have developed for, for uh, release until end of this year. So here is the, its prototype. And we are now working on to prepare its launch. Nice, so actually the choices for Fujifilm cameras is growing because Fujifilm themselves are bringing more cameras to the market and that will help creators to express themselves better also thanks to the new lens. Let's talk about your own camera. Mm -hmm. And I think it was April when you announced a firmware update for your FP camera because that was kind of a, a firmware release that you worked quite, quite hard on in order to deliver more functionality for the people who are using the FP camera. So what was it all about? We launched this camera at the end of 2019, and we uh, released its major firmware update uh, three times until uh, 2022 in this April. So uh, the function and its durability, its compatibility is completely different from our first version. So we have added a lot of functions like time code input, color mode off, and B-Row and ProRes row recording uh, function via HDMI out. Also, our latest firmware update version 4 uh, includes uh, false color to to convenient to raw shooting and other uh, uh, linear focus function of our mirrorless, cam mirrorless lenses. 
So um, like this, uh, we would like to, to improve our cameras gradually and we would like to provide such uh, possibility to our users that includes our existing users. Are you planning to release another firmware update either for the FP or FPL until the end of 2022? We are studying uh, about its firmware update, but I, I cannot to say it will be un, uh, released until in this year. However, we, we think some, uh, some possibility is here in our hands, so we would like to, to add more function to it and so that our existing user enjoy it. Welcome, Matsu san Thank you very much for your time and thank you for presenting the new products. My pleasure, as usual. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.